Rod Hightower, the president and CEO of EAA. You've been on the job now for about seven months. You haven't gone off to uh, run the checkout counter at Kmart yet. So how are you feeling about seven months into the job? <laughs> it's a blast. I got to tell you, the seven months, it really does. It feels like seven days. You know, the days are long, but they go fast. There's a lot to do, but it's fun and invigorating. And I know it sounds like a, a schmoozy answer, but it is not. Can you imagine having, if you love aviation, can you imagine having this job? It's a blast, and it's important for aviation. What was the impetus for this grassroots tour? You know, our chapters, we have almost 1,000 chapters globally. And one of the things that I believe very strongly in is getting out and getting connected to the chapters. The chapters are a very important part of EAA, always have been, always will be. But the chapter network is how we reach the population that's the place that touches the general public, brings people into aviation, gives people a lots of things to do in aviation, and drives that participation. So the chapters are really the, the core of EAA in terms of how we get things done and how we participate and interact. What are you hearing from your members as you tour around the country? Oh, I hear some great stuff. Lots of questions. Boy, there's a lot of questions about what's the AVGAS going to be like? What's the regulatory landscape looking like? What's the security implications, certainly with TSA, which you know, wasn't around really in a meaningful way before? Also, what are we doing to grow aviation? What are we doing to protect our right to fly? Those are very much on the minds of our EA members. When it comes to the EAA at its core, we grew up in the home building movement. We grew up in home building. That's our core, always will be. But it's really interesting to listen to members react to information that we provide. Every stop, I have members that were not aware that we registered 941 amateur-built airplanes last year against 867 OEM-built airplanes last year. And over the last five years, the amateur-built segments continue to grow. And I think the amateur-built community in the EAA is obviously strong. It's the home, home in the world for it. But I think they are finding out that it's a much bigger community and growing faster than many of them actually realized or understood before. We are just about, what, three and a half months away from, from Oshkosh from this year. What are the plans for Air Adventure for 2011? Oh, we've got some great stuff. First of all, if you like music, REO Speedwagon's opening concert on Monday night. Gary Sinise and the Lieutenant Dan Band is returning and will be there. And a wonderful guy, Aaron Tippin, another passionate aviator, is going to perform. So that's your music venue for the week, and there's going to be a little bit of something for everybody in the music sense. As you know, it's the 100th anniversary of Naval Aviation, so we're going to have a tremendous uh, celebration and tributes to famous naval aviators, including many of the astronauts that are surviving, will be at Air Ventures. So you come out and see that. There's some, there's some interesting folks. One of the greatest pilots, pilot, one of the greatest pilots of all time, Bob Hoover. We're going to have a tribute to Bob Hoover, and it's going to be extremely powerful and extremely moving, and I think it's going to be great. Also, the most prolific designer and home builder of all time, Burt Rutan, who has retired this year, as you know, from Scale Composites. There's going to be a tremendous tribute to Burt Rutan this year. So those are some of the mainstream things that are on the venue. And, of course, some really wonderful aircraft are going to be there. Lots of innovation, a lot of stuff happening in the aviation world that's going to be showcased there. And don't forget electric flight. Electric flight is really come of, coming of age. There's a tremendous amount of interest in the electric flight competition that we're having this year, and that's going to be pretty neat. It's going to put the state of the art to the test to see if these airplanes are going to be reliable, rugged, and perform in a way that's going to be useful. And I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised at what they see. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. The iconic photograph from Air Venture last year was the one that said, no wake zone. What did you learn from last year's Slosh Kosh event, and what are you planning in this year to maybe help ameliorate that should it happen again? Oh, you know, sometime in the future in history, it's going to happen again. I would almost bet that. But we did learn a lot, and I can tell you that Steve Taylor and the guys, the ground crew, all the men and women of the ground crew and volunteers did a, not only a fantastic job of adapting and keeping the show going, while we prepared the site for, for Air Venture, but it was also important to listen to them and take away their lessons learned. There were a lot. 
better communications, how do we improve the drainage on that site? So we've taken our capital projects, made sure that we've got drainage as one of the top priorities because once that water gets in that volume there, it just has no place to go. So drainage projects are, are front and center for us in real terms where we're spending real capital to make improvements to the site. And of course, we'll have more wood pile chips that we can have for everybody to throw down in the mud that have to in places. We weren't expecting that. We didn't have enough. And by the way, we consumed the entire available supply, I think, in two states for that weekend. We'll probably have more. Weather was also an issue at Lakeland here recently. What lessons did you take away from the severe weather incident at Lakeland that you're going to transfer to Oshkosh? There's a lot. My staff, we gathered after that. All of us lived through it. We had staff, you know, hunkering down in the tent in the building, truly fearful of their safety. And it was a pretty traumatic experience for a lot of the staff that had to endure that, as it was for many people on the grounds. But there were some key takeaways. One of the key takeaways is we're going to be pretty, we're going to pay a lot of attention and probably put some new requirements in place that for everything that's tied down, from aircraft to tents to vendor booths. You know, one of the greatest, there were two missiles that were flying around in that event. We all saw them. We all witnessed and experienced it and lived through it. Umbrellas, pretty bad news. They were flying like missiles in <laughs> that place. Believe it or not, porta potties were flying all over that place. So anything that came loose and tumbled and, and, and blew down downwind, you know, became a, a hazard and a threat to everybody. The one lesson I would have to say, though, as it relates to aircraft, is they've got to be tied down securely with proper tie downs. And if you looked at the 70 airplanes that were damaged, the 40 that were probably totaled and really damaged, the tie downs were flapping in the wind. And we could see exactly what kind of tie down system was on the end of that rope. And by the way, it wasn't robust enough. So give that some thought to everybody out there in Aviation Nation, that when you go to these air shows and you're gonna be gone for a few days, bring your own tie down kits and bring proper ones. I am not kidding. I saw flapping in the wind right after that, tie downs that were clearly dog leash tie downs. That is not adequate for any kind of an aircraft. So be thoughtful about it. There's a lot of products that are available in the market out there. Those are good, uh, but don't forget, it, it needs to go deep and it needs to stay firm. If you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Let's talk about the state of the industry for just a little bit because people are still saying that GA is frankly teetering on the brink. Uh, the cost of entry is still high. Uh, the pilot population is aging. What is EAA doing to help bring back people into aviation and make it a more robust industry again? It's necessary and it's needed, first of all. Let's not forget that part. Oh, and by the way, recreational aviation and sport aviation is alive and well and doing just fine. Are we in a tough economic situation? You better believe it. Coming out at the back end of what we've been through in three years has clearly slowed down the aviation and aerospace GDP. As it relates to what we're doing about it, this is the most important part. You know, that big spike of pilots after World War II in the 60s and 70s with the GI Bill, the tremendous amount of aviators that come out of the war itself. And then secondly is what I call the aviation mindedness of the nation. You know, there were some cool things out there in the general public every day to remind you of aviation and, and remind you that it's fun and interesting and cool. So that inspiration seems to be a little bit muted maybe in, in the world. Kids today have a lot of opportunities and a lot of things to choose from. But in the case of the EAA, we are all about creating the next generation of aviators, bringing people into aviation. And our definition of an aviator is not just pilot. You know, if you have it in your heart that you love aviation, that's wonderful. If, whether you're a builder, whether you're an enthusiast, whether you're a pilot, if you have it in your heart, whether you're 8 or 88, you're welcome at EAA. There's a lot of stuff to do with us.